Blog Talk Radio. Hey, 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 what's up, what's up? It's Jason Kelly on the hottest, hypest, and happiest half hour ever in your life. That's right, 30 JK in the building on a Saturday afternoon. And oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, you are about to be so excited to be joined in today because right now we're about to go old school rolling up in here. And I am about to surprise you with a little something something just for you. Thanks for tuning in and let's rock this. Every time you went window shopping, someone came along right after you and bought you everything you wanted. Sounds like a dream. We know. Four strangers. One goal. To win a head-to-head competition for the chance at $100,000. You're about to see these two teams battle it out for $10,000 in cash. Because it's time to play The Family Feud. A dreams come true. One wrong answer could be their last. It's the new prices right. On shopping spree. This is Russian roulette. Now here's the star of our show, Bob.
But check it out. Check what out? Yo, check this out. It's time. Yes, that's right. I'm ready. Let's get this party started with the one and only man, myth, and legend, Mr. Burton Richardson. <laughs> well, thank you for that very fine introduction there, Jason. You're the man. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, indeed. I, that, that that mega mix of yours is, is fabulous. It's so exciting to listen to. As a matter of fact, I could barely remember uh, some of those shows uh, that you got those clips from, you know. So hearing them again kind of brought back some old memories, especially that wait till you have kids and the, and the liver than live, you know, and, and some of those other things. My goodness. That was really great to hear. You did a, a wonderful job on that, my friend. Thank you, Mr. Burton. Thank you, Mr. Burton. Thank you so much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen of 30JK Nation, this is the man that needs no introduction because, ladies and gentlemen, he is the introduction. All the way from <laughs> Portland, Oregon, he lives in Los Angeles, California, game show announcing legend, Burton Richardson is back on the J one more time. And, this and time, I am thrilled and honored and happy to be back on your show, my friend. Well, thank you so much. And what we're about to talk about here, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about um the other side of Burton Morell Richardson. Oh my goodness! This could be this could be an expose. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk about uh, this this company he has, Voice Tronics. Now, now get this, gang. We're gonna tell you what that is right now. What is Voice Tronics actually? Well, Voice Tronics is the name of my company, uh, and the name came about. Uh, because of, uh, by way of the two major interests in my life. Uh, one was the voice work, the voiceover, the announcing uh, uh, part, and the other was the technological part, as I was always interested in electronics and science and rocket ships and all that kind of thing. So um, after I got out of college, I, I went to a school where I learned uh, – basic and advanced broadcast electronics theory, and I started teaching it not long after that. And, and so as I was doing the voiceover work, I started uh, building computers. I built my own computers and started building them for my friends and others. And at some, at some point, I decided, well, I could you know, do this as a sideline. So I, I got a business license, and, and uh, I named the company Voicetronics, the voice part, obviously, for voiceover, and the tronics for uh-huh. electronics. And uh, ah. so that's how that name came about, and I do both of those things. Oh, wow, wow. I bet you even do laptops, too. Uh, well, I can, well <laughs> uh, laptops are, are quite modularized so that there is not a lot of repair work 
uh, to be done on them per se, not like a desktop computer. But yes, I, I work on laptops as well. Oh wow, that's that's really great. Wow. Well, now we know where Voicetronics came from. Is it? Yes. Is it based, you, you know my is my it, is it the other in, side. Oh, uh, yeah. Is it based in Portland or L.A.? Uh, Los Angeles, where I am okay. right now. Okay. Or and actually, I'm I'm a few miles north of Los Angeles in the San Fernando Valley. But oh, okay. uh, within uh, within about maybe a 20, 25 minute drive to Hollywood. So whenever I'm called to do some voice work in Hollywood, uh, and that's about how how far away I am, oftentimes I'm called to Burbank uh, to do voice work, and sometimes Santa Monica, which is more of a trek. But uh, you know, I managed to get down there from time to time as well. Hmm. Cool. Cool. Now, I've seen on your um, Facebook page that you pilot planes. Yes, I do. I certainly do. And when you come out to visit me in L.A., I'm going to take you up on a starlight flight over the city Ooh. where you'll see it as you had never have before. Yes, wow. I've always been interested, as I, as I mentioned a few moments ago, about spaceships, rocket ships, that kind of thing, and airplanes as well. And I started flying, uh, started flying lessons actually in 19, I believe it was 72, and got my license in 73, and I've been flying ever since. I, you know, went on beyond the private pilot's license and got a commercial pilot's license and instrument rating so that uh, my piloting skills uh, were enhanced above just the private pilot level. And I was then uh, capable of uh, flying in uh, weather when you can't see, you know, in cloud and low visibilities and uh, that kind of thing. Wow, that's really excellent. I'm, I'm holding you to that. Burton Richardson, announcer, um, computer guy, entertainer, singer, Arsenio Hall, The Price is Right, Russian Roulette, Bam's Fat-Ass Game Show, Win Tuition, Family Feud, To Tell the Truth, <laughs> Shopping Spree, Wait Till You Have Kids, It Takes Two with Dick Clark, man, Rodeo Drive, Almost yes, the whole darn Louise Jay Duarte. Wolpert Library. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah, I did a, I did of, a few shows with him, yes. Yeah, and of and course the last what a learning experience been, it was and a lot of fun, too. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm stepping on your lips there. <laughs> We're speaking at the same time. <laughs> right, 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 right. The last word with Wink Martindale, the pilot from Merrill Heater Production. Yeah. And now... And and now you're doing Celebrity Family Feud again with Steve Harvey, just like you did last season on ABC. Yes, indeed. And any other any other any other um, any other television shows other than uh, Feud right now? Uh, nothing to report at this very moment. But in this business, uh, as with many others, things can change very quickly. So I'm always on the lookout for new projects, and. When I'm not doing something like that, I'm doing non-broadcast voiceovers too, um, more institutional stuff for businesses and that kind of thing. So I, I stay busy there and, uh, you know, and just kind of enjoying life, my friend. Oh, yeah. I definitely loved your voicing for Twas the Night Before Christmas. And I'm like, who is, I'm like, who is, who is this guy? I'm like, oh, okay, Burton Richardson? I remember this guy. <laughs> I, I, I listened to it, and then like, whoa, I'm almost moved, man. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, that came about by way of a producer that I've done several uh, voiceovers for, and uh, he had a Christmas gathering uh, at his uh, condo in Marina del Rey. Uh, I think it was, what, a year, maybe two years ago? Uh, I'm, I'm losing track of space and time here, but not that long ago, within the last year and a half, I think. Um, and he asked me if he had written it, he asked me if I would do that uh, and if he would be able to record that and put it on uh, a website. And I said, well, sure, I'd be happy to. So uh, while I was over at his place uh, where he had his gathering, I read that uh, before the group, and he had a... Uh, microphone set up, so he recorded the read while I was there, and then he put some music behind it, some Christmassy sounding music, and he put it on, and 
and uh, it seems to, people seem to like that. So I'm happy that you had an opportunity to hear it, and, that, and especially that you enjoyed it as well. Wow, that's excellent. Um, in about a few moments, I'm going to have some people call in a studio and um, cool. have, you, have you answer some questions. And the phone number, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to talk to Brother Burton, is 347-857-2310. That's if we call 347-857-2310. Or you can log on to blogtalkradio.com forward slash JKFX for life. That's JKFX, the number four, L-I-F-E, all capital, all one word. You spread the word, and you know that's word. And Burton, as promised, if I ever get to L.A., if I ever get to Television City or wherever Fremantle will take card charts, you and me right there. It's all good. I love it. Okay. Repeating the number for those of you that tuned in or just about tuned in, it's 347-857-2310, logtalkradio.com forward slash JKFX for life. That's JK. FX, the number four, L-I-F-E, all capital, all one word. Again, Burton Richardson from Family Feud. On your marks, let's start the Family <laughs> Feud. The price is right, inviting everybody to come on down. And, of course, the Arsenio Hall Show from Stage 29 at Paramount Studios on Melrose Avenue, in the heart of Hollywood, California, in these United States, on that great big planet called Earth, it's Arsenio Hall! Oh. <laughs> uh, you have no idea how much I am enjoying this, Jason. <laughs> great job, Man. my friend. Lots of energy, and, and one day I am sure I will hear your voice on a game show, and I will be able to you, tell my cronies that I know that guy. <laughs> That's Jason yeah, Kelly. Right? I know him. <laughs> right. And they'll say, no, you don't. <laughs> I'll say, yes, I do. <laughs> I've been a guest on and this then, show two times. Right. I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious. I definitely would love to, to announce uh, a game show so badly. I mean, it's just in my blood. I would just, I just love it. I would just. Well, love it. you're making a good start, and I've heard some of the uh, uh, voice things that you put together on Facebook, and and they're very creative and sound good. Lots of energy, good smile, and uh, yeah, I could hear you doing this, this kind of work. Yeah, you, for sure. You taught me that. You taught me that. You guys taught me that. Randy, Dean Goss, um, the whole lot of y'all. And I really appreciate yeah. all you're doing. Oh, well, listen, you know, it's uh, it's one of those uh, pay it forward kind of things. You know, I've I've had some help along the way getting into this career from, from uh, people who are in the business, which I greatly appreciated and I think enhanced my opportunities uh, uh, greatly. And so whenever I meet someone such as yourself, somebody who's working so hard to do this and, and is making strides in the, in the right direction, you know, if there's any way I can help out at all, I'm happy to do so, you know, because I'd like uh, to see it work out for you and for you to have a good career doing this and, and uh, you know, just, just enjoy. Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Oh, man. Okay. Shirley is a name that I'm going to bring up next. Who is that to you? Who is that to me? Well, surely you jest. <laughs> surely. Surely is my dear wife for many, many years now, uh, whom I met at a nightclub across the street from Disneyland, of all places, uh, where I used to go after a radio shift I had back in, oh, gee whiz, this was back in the 70s. And I was working at a radio station, uh, a beautiful music station, as they called it back then, the slow, easy listening music. 
Um, right. Some people now refer to that as elevator music. Back then it was really popular. Right. And I would get right. off the air at 10 at night, and I'd still be, you know, I was a, I was a young guy back then. I think I was like 22. <laughs> and uh, I'd get off the air, and I wanted to do something fun, so I found out that at Disneyland they had uh, a nightclub kind of atmosphere in a couple of areas out there where you could dance until like, you know, 1, one o'clock in the morning, and they had live, uh-huh. live music. So I used to go out there and meet people and dance, and then – uh, after they would shut down at the uh, uh, Grand Hotel across the street from Disneyland in Anaheim, uh, they, there was a club that went until 2 o'clock. So I would go over there and dance some more and meet some more people. And one night uh, I saw this girl dancing on the dance floor that really caught my eye. And so I asked her to dance uh, after she finished dancing. And uh, she said no. And I said, no, why not? And she says, because I'm perspiring. And I said, well, then we'll dance and you, we can perspire together. And so <laughs> all right. that, that was the beginning. <laughs> and here it is all these years later. Uh, we're, we're, we're still together. And, um, you know, it's been, it's been really good with her. Oh, awesome. And what does, and what does Shirley do? Um, Shirley is an animal keeper at the Los Angeles Zoo. And she works, she she loves animals. Uh, She started out working with elephants and then went to giraffes. And uh, uh, she's she's now working with gorillas and orangutans and uh, chimpanzees and different kinds of hoof stop. Uh, Mm, So she's, you know, and um, and so uh, uh, one of our daughters, has a home nearby, and she recently bought uh, some don- some donkeys, <laughs> very cute ah. miniature donkeys, very very cute little things. Um, they remind me of Shetland ponies, only a little bit smaller, and they're very cute. And they um, so my wife goes out there and helps my daughter with those, and so she so that's what she does. She's an animal person, sort of like a female Bob Barker. Uh, well, spaying, well, uh, yeah, like well, sort of loosely. Uh, now I know that Bob Barker doesn't care much for animals uh, that are in enclosures and that kind of thing, and you know, so the so he didn't care much for zoos per se. Whereas my wife, uh, at the beginning, before she started working at the, the zoo, uh, interestingly, she didn't think zoos were good places for animals either. But then once she uh, started working there and found out from the inside what it's like and that the animal keepers at the zoo really do love their animals, they treat them uh, sometimes probably better than their own kids, um, and they do the, their best to keep the animals healthy and, and so on, that uh, the zoo really was a good place for animals uh, that are uh, in the United States that are going to be used for display purposes, you know, so they're given a really good environment in which to live. Uh, so uh, that's where she and, and Bob Barker uh, diverge on philosophies, I would say. Right. You are listening but, to Virgil uh, Richardson on 30JK. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say uh, our uh, Chihuahua has been neutered, however. <laughs> All right, there you go. Wow. Who have, who have been who has been your favorite of all of all the game shows you've announced? What would be your favorite one or ones? My fa- yeah, I'm glad you said ones because most of them were really great to work on. Let's see now. Let me think. Um the nighttime price is right. I really loved working with Doug Davidson on that show. He was a super guy to work with. And on the nighttime show, the prizes they gave away were just astounding. You know, they were, they were upscale from the daytime shows. You know, they gave away, you know, usually it was uh, very expensive stuff. They gave away Cadillacs and, uh, you know, right and left and, and uh, uh, wonderful trips and furniture, uh, Sweets and all all kinds of of great stuff um, on the show, and the girls, the prize models, you know, they were they were dressed up like in evening gowns and that kind of thing uh, most of the time. So it looked very upscale, and it was it was fun to do. And on uh, the nighttime show, each episode was only a half an hour <laughs> in length, so I didn't have to work as hard as on the daytime show because, as you know. 
there's about 23 pages of prize copy uh, for each one-hour episode that you hear, that, that you see in the daytime, uh, whereas at night, there's half as much. So, you know, you don't, you don't kill yourself in the announcing area. But even right. doing the daytime 23 pages, it was still a lot of fun, but it, it was quite a challenge. The nighttime show, uh, I really enjoyed that uh, a lot. Um, now, did you ask me which is my most, which is my favorite game show or my favorite show altogether? I think you said um, game show, well, so that's good because I'm yeah. thinking the Arsenio Hall show was a hell of a lot of fun. You know, that was always, yeah. always cool. Um, okay, Bert, the other game show. I have a, yeah, I have a guest. I have a guest right now. That just came in here. I'm gonna put him on, and it's Chris Kennedy on the Scott Cody JT show. Kelly. Thank you. Good to see you. you Burton. Hey. How are you doing? That's, uh, that's Chris Kennedy? Yes, this is he, Burton. How are you doing? How you doing there, Chris? God bless you. I am doing much better, actually. Doing much better. Well, that's always good. Yes. To, be do- to be doing better is good. To be doing much better is even better. God bless you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm, I apologize that I tuned in late. I was so tied up with things. I finally... Remember that I got a chance to. And I just wanted to wish you the best of luck in everything you do, Bert. Well, thank you very much, Chris. And uh, back at you, my man. I mean, I wish you the very God best as well. I know that you have several aspirations in this direction, so yes. I would like to see that all come together for you. I know. Yes, well, with your help and Jason Kelly's help and James Reese's help, we can work as a team. And I got some projects of my uh, What was that last Love part? I'm sorry. There was a dropout. Oh, I'm sorry. My phone connection is a little awful. Forgive me. But I have some projects in the works, and, and I'd love to work with you and Jason Kelly and James Greek all together as a team. And I think with my projects and his projects and everybody's projects, we'll come up with some great stuff. Okay. We're working on work, working on projects would be yeah. great with you, as long as it's not housing projects you're talking Thanks. about. <laughs> housing pro- Thank oh, goodness. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I know what you mean. Uh, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm like just kidding, but I take it. No, I'm it's sorry. Okay. You know, you got to you got a bunch of guys like us together, and all the comedy comes out. You know. <laughs> I know. That's what people need these days. Yes. Yes. Exactly. In this day and age, especially, I think. And I think it's a wonderful thing when we all come together and bring great comedy in great ways. Yeah, but, but but that's what we need more of, I think, in life in general is a little more levity, a little more comedy, uh, to have a a little yeah. more fun with stuff. Because I I think in general, uh, people seem to be so uptight about just about anything these days. Oh. It, it, you you it, you know, it, it's hard to to say what's on your mind for fear of saying the wrong word or saying saying right. the wrong way, and somebody will take wrong. You know, and, and we need more more fun, more comedy. No, uh, and I've dealt with my share of that too, and I've had enough of that. And I'm on. Oh yes, such is the story of life. But the main thing is to keep your head up and keep your eyes on the prize, and keep on going, no matter what people say and no matter what people do, because the only yes. one who can stop you right. from making progress is yourself. Uh-huh. I know. So you know, and, like, and I think if you talk, one, life. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, uh, I know that if you talk with anybody who's become a success in just about any industry, they will tell you that there were some pretty low and dark times mm-hmm. along the way when uh, everybody was telling them that they that they weren't going to make it, they didn't have what it took to yeah. make it, the times would be difficult for them, and, right. and so on and so on and so on, and other things, you know, that hold you back, but they... They they had this thing in their mind that they wanted to do whatever it was they were striving towards, and they just kept mm-hmm. with it. And uh-huh. at some point, it started to work out, and things got better, and then they got to where they are. Now, as far as audiences and okay. viewers go, for people who, uh-huh. who do what we do and want to do uh-huh. what we do in, in, in this industry, it may yeah. seem that when a person comes on the scene that uh, everything happened all of a sudden. It was like they were... They were unknown, and all of a sudden they're there, and it was an instantaneous yes. type of type of journey for them. Whereas the reality is quite the opposite. Yes. I mean, oh. like for myself, you know, I started yeah. out at a 
at a 1,000 watt radio station at a transmitter site that was uh, located way out in a field in Vancouver, Washington, next to a railroad track, so that when the train came by, it would it would rock yeah. the uh, the uh, turntables and the records would skip, right. you know, <laughs> and and you could hear it in the background sometimes if the mic was open, you know, and the pay was low, uh, and um, you know, but. I worked my way up from that, and some, and a lot of times was out of work, and I had no. people tell me, you know, that uh, I didn't have a snowball chance of success, and so mm-hmm. on. But I guess maybe there was a little stubbornness in my in my spirit that said, "No, nope, keep going. You can do it. You can do You're it. I don't care what they say. Yeah. You can do it." You know. And now I'm I think the same I, way. I, I, think look, I, can. I, I look behind I me, I and I it's can. like, "He is. It happened." Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, well, amazing, Jay. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, I think Chris, the thing thank you, is, uh, thank you. yes, no problem. Go ahead. What were you saying? I'm sorry, Jay. What were you saying? I'm sorry. Thank you so much for coming on, Chris. You definitely rock, hey, Chris. Baby. Nice talking with you, Chris. Wish you the best. Yeah, and feel free to email me. Yeah, and whatever. I starting up. Yeah, I'll be on social media again, maybe. Yeah, but feel free to keep in touch. It's fine. Definitely. God bless you. You're the best. Hey, thank you. You, know, you right? too, my man. It's another one. No problem. You got it. Hey, Take you got James it, Chris and, and James. No problem. You got it. All right. All right. Cool. Bye. All right, bye, man. See you. So long. All right, Burton. One more thing before we close out of here. I need to hear your intro for this very show. Everybody be quiet because I need to hear this right now. All right, whenever you're ready, the stage is yours. Get set, cyberspace. It's time to come on down to the hottest, hippest, and happiest half hour ever in your life. Liver than live, this is the one and only Bertie JK on Blog Talk Radio. This is Burton Richardson, your announcer, ready for action. Now, get on your marks and let's start this party with your host that rocks the most, the star of 30 JK, Mr. Jason Kelly. That was awesome, Burton. I loved it. <laughs> well, thank you, Jason. My agent will send you the bill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. You are wonderful. Thank you so much. I, I well, needed that. I needed that so badly. Well, thank you, Jason, and uh, back at you, my friend. You, you do a great job, and uh, I appreciate being your friend, and it's terrific being back on your show again. Thank you so much. Uh, I will definitely cherish this moment. Thank you so much, Brother Burton. And My pleasure. much love. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Burton Richardson right now. Ah, oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's what's up right there, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My goodness. Woo! All right. This brings this edition of 30JK to a close. Man, it is just wonderful to have you on. It's wonderful to be back with more episodes, more fun, more old school rolling just for y'all. Till then, it's your boy Jason Kelly saying horns up, head up, keep your chin up because that's what you blue devils always do all day, all night, all the time. And next week at the same time, it's going to be Jay Sean, Tramel, Gaffia. What is it? And why is it spreading like wildfire? The answers to this and many, many more. 
when you tune in to another edition of 30 Minutes with who? Jason Kelly. That's right. Chill. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yep, yep, yep. Well, time for me to get on up out of here and get old school rolling, baby. I love you. I love you. I love you. Keep it rocking and keep it slamming and jamming. And as always imparting, it's a JK thing. Sissy. We're gone. Bye for now, friends.
Hey, thanks for tuning in. This has been a JK FX for Life online presentation for the David 3000 Network. Peace. Don't forget to subscribe to the Democratizing Network for great more content like this one.